All right, I wanted to start this video by showing you the W3Schools website. It's a great website. It's uh, w3schools.com. You can go to it and search for anything. Um, you can see here that I'll just go back to the main page of the site and I just typed uh, HTML5 semantic elements. And you'll have to look through these just to make sure that you land on the one that says W3 Schools. And so now we're on this page. I just wanted to show you a few of the other semantic elements. We played with nav and footer. We also played with the main tag. But there's also all these others. There's header, section, article, aside. And there's just a lot of good ones that you can use anytime you have a section that you need to style. And that's what we did. We styled our, we gave text align center to all of them. I also added this. Let me just talk to you a little bit about this. This is the HTML comment tag. So when you want to put something on your website that won't show up on the web page, you type a left angle bracket exclamation point dash dash. It will finish the tag for you. I've just put some spaces there. But I've added a comment here that says HTML5 tags are like containers that can be used for styling sections of a web page. Now this, once I save it, won't show up on our web page because it's in the comment tags. That's what these comments are for. All right, so let's add some colors to our website. How do you think about colors? Well, my favorite way to talk about colors is to take you to the Palaton website. The Palaton website, and you can see it's just really palaton.com. I always click this second circle here to get analogous colors. And then I'll drag the middle of three circles around until I see a palette that I like. And this is the palette that I've selected for our website. I can use these colors. You can see right here, it's the hexadecimal color is right there. Um, but this, this is the color palette that I've chosen. Analogous colors are a really good choice, especially if you do not trust yourself to choose appropriate colors for a website. When you look here, you'll see it gives you a color and then a couple of colors of text you could put on that color. Um, and then W3 Schools, let me just close this, also has, let me go into the search bar and type HTML color names. You can also use color names. So you can't put spaces, as you can see, in the color names. And the color's hexadecimal numeral is right below it. So you could use Blanche Dalmond or hashtag FFEBCD. A hexadecimal number is six digits. They use the numerals 0 through 9 and A through F, which gives you, in the end, uh, thousands of colors to choose from. So I've chosen my colors in advance. And I'm going to show you, it's the, the way you style them. I'll put the web page up over here. Set up my desktop so that you have the browser on the right and the code on the left, which makes it easier. If you want a little more real estate here, you can click these little double pages here to collapse the navigation menu. So what I'm going to do is just add some styles to the already existing style tag. I'll go inside the quote mark, and now I'm going to add a background color, background hyphen color, colon, I'm going to add dark sea green. And I'll just save that so you can see what it looks like. I'll add that same color, whoops, I forgot my semicolon at the end, I'll add that same color to the footer. Let's check the format. Yep. So now I have a navigation color and a footer color. And to my main, I'm going to add a background color of steel blue. 
background look, I can just start typing that and I get the code hint. And I could file through all of these, but I'll just start typing it because then it will give it to me. Save. So now I have some background colors. Of course, as a web designer, I'm always going to look at this and decide what's good and what's bad about it. I think that I don't like this gap. And it looks like about 10 pixels, maybe. So I will add five pixels of padding to each of these. And I think that might take care of it. Padding is something that comes inside your container, not outside, but inside. So padding 5px. Let's see what that looks like. Looks pretty good there. Let's add it to the bottom one as well. There we go. Oh, that did take care of that. That looks like a lot of padding. I think we should add it to the nav as well. There, now it looks alike. Um, the last thing I would say about this site for now is that while the green and the blue are analogous colors, they both have some similar colors mixed into them, so they look good together. I think I could create more unity by making the H1 and maybe the H3s that same green. So I will copy that green right here and then background color dark sea green. I'll add it to my H1. I've got to type style equals background color dark sea green. So remember the format is a colon separates the property and the value and a semicolon goes between two styles. I only have one style but I'll still end it with a semicolon. And I don't want it to be the background color. I want it to be the text color. So I'm going to take off the word background and save again. There, I think that looks pretty good. I will copy that for each of the H3s. Save. All right, I might want to go to it with a little bit of a darker blue here, but for now, let me open the navigation again and do the same thing to page two. So let's get page two up on the live server. And there's a lot to do here. It's the same stuff we did to page one. I'm sort of feeling like, why type it all again? Why don't I just copy it? There's our navigation. Now I'll add the main tags. Oh, once again, I'll copy the main tag. And then I'll close the main tag at the very bottom. And this page does not have a footer. All right. Now let's get these in the H3s. And the H1s. see if we got them all. Oops, we missed number four. All right. In the next video, we'll learn to style links.